All right, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Thursday, August 10th, 2023, about 12.36 p.m. California time here. And, of course, had a little bit of earthquake activity on the San Andreas Fault here on the creeping segment uh, here in California around the Parkfield area. Now, there was two legit earthquakes popping up here uh, in this region. I did see the signature of two earthquakes showing up uh, slightly there across the Petrolia area of Northern California. Uh, got the larger one first, and then the second one behind that uh, earthquake. Looks like a little bit of movement stirring up across the Petrolia area as well, following this little, looks like a little spike coming in. So watch the West Coast here today. Things are looking slightly active. It's been a little while since we've had a four-pointer out here, uh, specifically in this area of California the last 30 days 2.5 and above well this has uh, been awfully quiet here along the segment of the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault so things are starting to fill in slightly uh, even let's see the all magnitudes map here let's see what we got a little little bit of uptick over the last 30 days but uh, goodness starting to fill in slightly so the first earthquake here <coughs> 4.4 occurred just off the San Andreas Fault, six kilometers deep. That was followed up here at the same time by a 4.3 on the San Andreas Fault. So pretty sure these have been reviewed by a seismologist now. The first one coming in uh, shows some of the uh, Did You Fill It reports across the area of California, uh, mostly around the San Luis uh, Obispo area with a few reports coming in there. Uh, from that 4.4 earthquake, the first one coming in. Uh, the second one, a 4.3. Uh, that earthquake um, has been reviewed as well. It looks like for the most part, people are just um, chiming in on that uh, very first earthquake. Either way, two earthquakes occurring out here. Uh, two four-pointers, four and that's a little odd, a little concerning. That could mean that there's quite... Uh, a bit well, obviously we know there's quite a bit of strain out here across the southern california area uh, but watching this movement right here uh, definitely might want to be on guard here today for activity across california 1.2 down here on the garlock fault shear zone uh, the extreme southern california area around the san andreas fault the lock segment uh, remains locked for now uh, not a whole lot of activity currently taking place there. We have seen some movement, though, off the Imperial Fault in the last seven days or so. We'll pull up the 2.5 map and above. Shows a little bit of swarming going on here. Uh, and was kind of watching this area for some uh, pressure and momentum traveling up the plate boundary. But it kind of skipped the uh, San Andreas Fault here, the southern segment. That just goes to tell us that uh, things are still ramping up here as far as winding that spring about as tight as it can go as far as the plate dynamics here in this uh, portion of the state uh, so that uh, will skip it looks like we got some activity though on the creeping segment now it looks like the usgs uh, uh, got rid of one of these quakes here but as we've seen i don't think i can go back here now and see the other one but Almost looks like there was definitely two earthquakes. Uh, there's a couple different ways we can check and see here. Um, we can go over here to the waveforms and see what we have for seismic data. Now, if they were at the same time, possibly it would be hard to, uh, you know, see if there was actually two or not. But I've seen it show up there on the uh, Petrolia station. Um, far as seismic, ah, oh, there's not a whole lot of seismic stations out here, at least on this map. Well, let's see what we got. This is a station around the Columbia College area. No data, of course. Um... I'm not for sure why these aren't working. Yeah, no data. A hmm, little odd. There's the waveform picking it up there in, in Nevada. Uh, kind of hard to tell. So 
Either way, I was kind of leaning more towards there it was actually two earthquakes striking out there. But all right, so it looks like right now, right now, now this subject to change too. Uh, that 4.3 was the only quake, and that was on the San Andreas Fault creeping segment, 9.5 kilometers deep. Originally, one of these coming in as a 4.9 earthquake. Typical along a strike-slip boundary. Uh, let's see here. Where are... Yeah. I'm going to check out some of these magnitudes here and see what stations are reporting what. Now, these are just preliminary reports coming off of various seismograph stations here. Uh, close to where this earthquake struck. They, they throw out a number after computing it all and then after uh after everything gets reviewed then they um put out that preliminary earthquake data report and then most likely reviewed by a human some reports here again showing this as a 5.0 uh the majority of these stations though show a mid four to upper four magnitude range but again there's a couple upper fours in there 5.1 these are the magnitudes over here that uh, is estimated from the seismograph stations at various locations. So there's quite a few fives in there as well, but they go about and round it all out. And then um, it gets reviewed by a seismologist there and gets put out here for a final magnitude, which is currently uh, 4.32. So... Yeah, I'm somewhat active out here, folks. Definitely uh, be on guard. Like I say, if you felt this earthquake, let us know. I didn't feel it. Obviously, I'm way up here in Chico. Um, more than likely, this is probably just going to be very minimally felt across the area. Let me see if anybody else reported it out here. Not a whole lot of reports. Again, mostly down south here, away from the epicenter. But uh, I'm sure if you were right near the epicenter, uh, near the San Andreas Fault, you would have probably felt it pretty nicely. Probably a good jolt. I was down there, um, I think about a year or so ago, checking out the uh, this segment here of the San Andreas Fault near Parkfield. Uh, kind of neat to see the, um, the plate boundary itself and actually be right on it. A little bridge down there that goes across the uh, uh, across into the Pacific plate boundary from the North American side and uh, it, it curves you know it kind of uh, shows the um, the warping of the bridge due to the plate dynamics out here all right so we'll continue to watch that folks see what uh, see what goes on you know a little nudge on the plate boundary could send uh, some strain into some areas that are possibly overdue here for some large quakes. So we'll continue to watch this uh, throughout the day today. All right, uh, what else we got for the rest of the uh, state? Northern California, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot through Oregon. The Washington region, slight activity up here, mostly across the uh, Cascade Mountain Range uh, up into the Alaska region here. Looks uh, pretty quiet for now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a couple smaller earthquakes keying up here, mostly from yesterday, uh, but I guarantee you that 4.3 probably showed up here on the seismograph stations, more than likely. And then again, maybe not. Let's see here. Did have a little bit of earthquake activity overnight, looks like. I believe, unless that was a couple thunderstorms that blew through there, hard to say. It uh, looks like... It was confined over here around the Maple Creek area. A lot of times that's what the thunderstorms will look like as they blow through in that region. But as far as earthquake activity goes, there's a couple. That's going to be the well-defined ones, not these bubbly looking ones. Um, you know, you could mistake that for magma movement. But uh, again, I, I tend to check the radar imagery in comparison when things like that happen. But I'm pretty certain... There was another band of thunderstorms that blew through there late last night. Uh, either way, continue to watch that. Uh, let's 
Let's go across the area here. Texas, Oklahoma. A couple smaller quakes around the region today. Uh, let's see what we got on the Earthquake 3D globe here. Looks like some movement going on down into the South America region on the globe. That wider, uh, larger signature right there. Looks like a 4.4. Uh, and looks like a handful of larger quakes in there maybe 5.1 in there as well that's a pretty recent quake though from uh, just a couple hours ago doesn't look like USGS has got it yet unless again this is the older one from uh, just after midnight so definitely some activity stirring up here across South America currently Uh, across the area of New Zealand looks fairly quiet maybe a 3.5 off the North Island coast some movement stirring up into the Tonga area as well looks like fairly shallow earthquake though we did see some movement uh, some deeper activity here recently looks like maybe starting to strain the upper regions here of the subduction zone big island of Hawaii looks like Kilauea volcano stirring up slightly today just some earthquake activity out here Mostly one to two kilometers deep. I don't think we have anything major going on there as far as the stirring up of, of eruptive activity, but I will double check. Weekly update here still from a couple days ago uh, reminded us that Kilauea Volcano is still on a pause, currently not erupting, and no significant changes have been observed. We'll watch that, though, for some uh, earthquake swarming. That would basically give us a good indicator of things starting to... Uh, maybe get more active below the surface there but for now just a couple small earthquakes there in the region of Kilauea volcano and also the Pahala area on the southeastern edge there of the big island uh, down here into the Indonesia area most of this activity there from late last night we did see a couple smaller quakes there in the four range just after midnight and uh, that again that's our cluster area of earthquake activity today um, right up against the Java Trench as well. Quite a few threes and fours stirring up there. Kuro Kamachaka, pretty quiet. We did have, it looks like, one 4.8 up here in the Bend area. Nothing showing up here from the USGS map. I don't know. They've been not showing too much activity here in, internationally for some reason. Uh, but there's some activity there with that 4.8 occurring just a couple hours ago there off the coast of Russia. Uh, Russia. Turkey did see a moderate size aftershock here. USGS is reporting that earthquake with a 5.3. And I call that an aftershock because that is in the region that did see some large-scale earthquake activity here earlier this year. And it's been just an ongoing swarm, uh, aftershock sequence swarm there uh, since then. But uh, occasionally we get these moderate magnitudes stirring up there and then 5.3 shaking things up out there. Pretty uh, large magnitude aftershock. And, of course, some smaller quakes in there as well. A little bit of movement outside the Greenland area, it looks like. On the plate boundary of 4.4. Aside from that, the Atlantic Ocean looks pretty calm for the most part. We do have a bunch of ones on here. Let me get rid of those. don't want to keep it too cluttered. I like to keep it roughly around the 2.5 range and above uh, for earthquakes so we don't create a huge clutter. All right, uh, again, let me know if you felt this earthquake, folks. Um, down to one earthquake. Space weather activity here today. Still seeing some proton events at the polar regions. As far as flaring goes, very minimal activity. Only uh, looks like a couple sea flares overnight. Maybe one popping off currently as we speak. Let's see where this is coming from here. It looks like uh, uh, maybe down here in this region. Those a little bright feature uh, across that area. Let's see what we got here for the magnetogram image. This is last night's image. Tonight's image here, or uh, today's image, shows a little bit more complexity within this core of the sunspot region. And up here as well, notice the dashing uh, and a, a whole, quite a few different dots in here of different colors showing complexity of that sunspot region. Definitely watch that because that is growing and it has been for a couple days. So we'll watch that area for some stronger flaring. Uh, let's see. Current flare threat, 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 25. X flare has been dropped to 1%. Proton event, 
uh, about 15% or so. It looks like this is declining. Uh, Aurora forecast, pretty minimal. Not a whole lot going on here over the next couple days. Severe weather, well, a little bit less active today than uh, than yesterday, but still a pretty wide area of some severe potential out here uh, with a 5% chance for tornado probability, mostly around North Carolina here in the uh, Browner line. It's kind of a red, I'm not for sure what color you would call that, but uh, also 2% stretching across a good portion here of the eastern coast and up into the south, North Dakota, and also Nebraska area. See, seeing a slight chance for 2% tornado probability. Uh, main threat today, I guess, is going to be that tornado threat and uh, maybe some locally damaging wind gusts, some high wind gusts, and some hail. Uh, possible there across portions of the northern plains uh, tomorrow a little bit more broader setup here across the area of the midwest uh, and towards the great lakes area we'll keep an eye on that uh, tornado threat right now two percent chance wind events going to be the the main thing we'll keep an eye on that and see what happens tomorrow uh, and report back on that in the morning all right earthquake activity there on the seismograph stations look pretty calm for now um, unfortunately i don't have any Direct seismograph stations there on the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. I'll see if I can't pull them up. Uh, there's got to be one out here somewhere in the mix of triangles. Not all these stations work. If you use this program, you'll know this is pretty much an unsupported app. Um, and luckily, it still works, but uh, it takes a little couple tricks here to get some of these sta uh, stations to pop up. But I'll look around, see if I can't find a... Uh, a seismograph station there to monitor some activity because I'm sure there's going to be um, maybe potentially a little bit of aftershock activity, right? Unless this is going to be one of those times where this is a foreshock to something bigger. Uh, either way, it's best just to be prepared and, um, you know, have your earthquake plan in place. Um, let me know if you got a shake alert uh, on your phone or device. Um, I'm kind of curious to see how many people receive that alert and how many pe how many people don't uh, but if you if you didn't you might want to you know if you do have the app downloaded then there may be something wrong with their alert system but if you don't have this shake alert app I would definitely get it add it onto your um, list of apps on your phone or device that way you can be notified and I'm kind of curious how long of a time span um, did you have before the earthquake was actually felt compared to the notification that you received on your phone let me know in the comments below there's some of the reports coming in there from the uh, mostly the san luis obispo area um, and other areas around south of the bay i don't think we had too many uh, reports there around san francisco mostly well south of san francisco area along the coastline here maybe even into the uh, uh valley over here it looks like as well fresno region all right, folks, have a good one. Stay safe out there. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight. Again, let me know if you felt this earthquake. Have a good one.